Hi guys, happy Talk About It Tuesday. Um, the message this week I was given is don't be distracted. Your assignment requires energy, so don't get distracted. When the enemy can't destroy you, he distracts you. If he can't stop you from getting out of the boat, he makes you look at the wind. Remember, distractions are designed to get you off course or out of God's will. The enemy wants you to be so focused on what is going wrong in your life so that you become angry and take your eyes off of God. Distractions can take up all your attention, disturb you or make you feel troubled, entertain you and cause strife. The enemy does this with words and actions. He will use anything he can to trigger you like past hurt or wounds that are still open or barely closed. Things that tend to be uh, idols in your life. Social media, you know, that Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TV, you could be housewives, CNN, anything. Um, desires you hold on to, like being financially free, um, in a dream career, married, um, children, home, or even the company you keep, like friends and family. See, he does this by, say you have, you've always wanted to have kids. Well, the enemy will use that against you because you're like, you don't have them yet. Thought God was giving it to you. Or when you want to be financially free, he's like, mm. next thing you know, you get stuff in the mail and you're like, and the enemy's like, mm, where's God now? Thought he was going to pay for your big old house on the hill. Or, you know, you want to be in your dream career. Next thing you know, you're unemployed or you're in a career that doesn't look anything like your dream. And here comes the enemy like, hmm, how's that praying going for you? Doesn't look like you're going to get that dream career. You're not there yet. You've been praying how long? That's what the enemy does. He triggers little things like, yeah. And then next thing you know, you're like, exactly. Why am I not in a dream career? Exactly. You start agreeing. You start, stop agreeing with God. Next thing you know, you're agreeing with the enemy like, yeah. Why am I not financially free? Why do all of a sudden I got bills stacked up? I thought I was going to be financial free. So then you stop agreeing with God like, you know, the enemy's right. That's the place you don't want to be. You start agreeing with the enemy instead of staying with the agreement, instead of being like, you know what? I will get my dream of career. I declare, I decree, I decree that I will be in my dream career. No, instead you're like, I'm not going to be in it. It ain't happened yet. You know, I always get, you know, I always get turned down every time I apply for something. And then you step out of agreement with God and you step into agreement with the enemy. The enemy doesn't want you to live out your purpose in life. See, that's the whole point. He, um, he'll have you caught so caught in worldly success where you're thinking about you're comparing everything that's going on in your life to others and the world success and their definition of success instead of godly success um, to the point where you can actually be driven crazy. Why do you think people who are millionaires, who have money, seem to be like they have everything and they're miserable? Um, a lot of them commit suicide. They're on antidepressants. And you're looking at them like, what more could you want in life? Because it doesn't work like that. Life doesn't work like that. You, you're basing everything off the world says success is instead of what God says success is. And those people aren't at a peace of mind because if you were, you wouldn't be still wanting more. Like it's a concept that doesn't work out in life. And so you want to stay alert and be ready for the attacks that the enemy is going to do to get you out of purpose and out of alignment with God. First Peter 5, 8 through 9 states, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. We're not going out like that. We're not going out like that. You got to make your mind up and say, I'm not going out like that. Remember, God is the captain of your ship. When you start losing sight of your captain, you start trying to steer your own ship. GPS can't help us with directions in life. When we start going the wrong way, it can't say, it can't, it can't help us. Only God can help us. But surely if you catch yourself going the wrong way and you surrender back for Jesus to take the wheel, you can yell out to the enemy, hold up, rerouting. I repeat, rerouting. I do it all the time. Like I'm rerouting. That's what the GPS say. Sometimes you got to yell that out to the enemy. I challenge you every time this week or anytime something happens and you hear that other voice in your head telling you it rerouting anytime you start falling off track doing stuff you ain't supposed to rerouting i dare you to yell it out and switch up the atmosphere it's okay to reroute in life it's okay and that's the message for this week 
rerouting. Love y'all. I'll be rerouting till the next time I talk to you guys. Have a good day. <laughs> Thank you, Professor J, for that word. And, and hey, rerouting, yes, we all need to reroute. So I'm just going to jump right on in this prayer and pray that God would just cover us and keep us from distractions. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for this week. Thank you for this day. Thank you, God, that you are going to cover us from distractions, Lord God. Lord God, those distracting voices in our head, Lord God, that are telling us everything, Lord God, that goes against your word and goes against your will for our life. Father, I pray for our viewers, Lord God, and I pray a special prayer of, of, of coverage over them, Lord God, as they go out through the week, through this month, Lord God, through the rest of this year, God. Lord God, help us, Lord, to not be distracted. Help us, Father, Father God, to learn how to put that other voice asunder, Lord God, and put it under our feet when it comes and try to distract us and it comes to try to go against what your word says, God. Help us to just not even pay attention. Like Professor Jay said, Father God, help us to reroute our thoughts. Help us to reroute our mindsets, God. Help us, Lord God, to see, Father God, the truth that you have promised us great things, Lord God, that you have promised us blessings, Lord God, if we keep our mind focus and stay on you, Lord God. Father God, I rebuke the enemy and all his distracting tactics, trying to make your people, Father God, look at things, Lord God, that are not important, Lord God, and devaluing, Lord God, the important things in life, God. Lord God, I pray, Father God, that you would raise up, Lord God, in each of your people that are watching, Father God, a standard, Lord God, because your word said that when we raise up a standard against the enemy, Father God, we can fight against him, Lord. So, Father, I just pray that over your people right now. I pray that over all of our viewers, Lord God. I I pray, Father God, that every time that distracting voice or those distracting circumstances come up in their lives, Father, I pray, Lord God, that they will hear the words rerouting, and Father, that they will be immediately, Lord God, their minds will immediately be switched over, Lord God, to the things of you, or their mind will be immediately, Lord God, rerouted and focused, Lord God, on you. You said, Lord God, that you can you can keep our minds, Lord God, and that if we keep our minds stayed on you, you will keep us in perfect peace. So help us, Lord God, to keep our minds stayed on you. And Father, we thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen.